Hello and welcome to Talking Europe. In this episode, we're going to do something slightly different. Instead of interviewing a policymaker or a politician, we're going to talk to a writer. Robert Menas has just won the European Book Prize, which was set up in 2007 to promote European values. He comes from Austria, but he lives in Brussels. And it's here that he began his current trilogy of novels. The first, called The Capital, took readers into the heart of the European institutions, not something that many authors attempt. The second book in the trilogy, and the one that has won him this award, is called The Enlargement, and it conjures up a love story between an Albanian lawyer and an Austrian bureaucrat against the backdrop of Albania's negotiations to join the EU. Again, not the kind of subject matter that a lot of writers would necessarily go for. Well, Robert Menas is with me and at the European Parliament here in Brussels. Thank you so much for being my guest. It's my pleasure. Congratulations are in order because you have won this prize for the second time. Yes. Uh, and you're the only uh, author to have won this twice. Were you surprised to win again? Uh, absolutely. I didn't expect it. Um, exactly because I won it already 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, the satisfaction and, and the pleasure is enormous. I, I, I'm very grateful. Why are you attracted to this EU institutional subject matter? Where does yeah. that come from? Because I'm a novelist. Mm. What is a novel? What um, should a novel uh, uh, be able to, to, to tell? Uh, contemporaneity. Uh, for us Europeans, the European Union is producing the, um, uh, the, the basics and the context of all our uh, lives and our, of our searches of, of, of luck and, and uh, wealthiness. Uh, it's European law which interferes in our lives, which defines our lives, which has reactions uh, in our lives and so if I try to tell how we are living today and what are our problems and how do we try to resolve them and what is the reason why we are not able to resolve them and so on it has all the time to do with the, with the um, uh, the, the, the context of European uh, law and, uh, and uh, reality of the European Union. I, I cannot understand uh, um, how I, I could tell about our contemporary life without reflecting this uh, with. A lot of the descriptions in um, enlargement, the enlargement there, really uncanny. I mean, I know the institutions quite well as well, and a lot of the political figures, they're really pitch perfect. Did, did you spend a lot of time with the actual politicians that you allude to in this novel, or was it more imagining how they are as people? Um, no, I... I, I... First, I was traveling on the, on the Balkan, in the Balkan states, North Macedonia, Albania, Montenegro, and so on, um, because um, I wanted to find um, the example uh, um, as interesting as possible for all these uh, countries which want to come in into the European Union. And um, so uh, suddenly I I realized it's Albania. It's, it's, um, it's a very interesting country. It is uh, completely different to, to others, uh, at the same time typical. Um, they implant uh, European law already uh, and are not, uh, not member of the European Union. And members of the European Union, like Poland, are breaking European law. These contradictions and what uh, uh, it makes with the people living in these countries, this was very, very interesting for me, and this I tried to, to tell. Yeah, you did juxtapose in uh, neighboring um, uh, passages the situation yeah. in Poland with, yeah. with Albania. Th there's one phrase which really struck me here, it's uh, not that far into the book, um, you said, it's one of your characters who says, he's Albanian, never forget that Europeans are interested 
in either markets or in symbols. They're fascinated by symbols because they don't have symbols of their own anymore. Uh, they don't have founding narratives. Um, is, is that the problem of this whole European construction, that mm. it's in a way manufactured these symbols like the mm. anthem, which is the Beethoven Ode to Joy, mm. or the flag with the stars on it, mm. but then you somehow... See, unique. Yeah, they're yeah. not organic, like yeah. the Albanian national symbols, mm. which you talk about a lot, especially yeah. Skanderbeg, so yeah, maybe yeah, take, tell us what and, that is. and uh, the eagle and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah Europe uh, has no symbols or uh, bad luck with symbols, because architecture could be a symbol. Yeah? Mm. Um, we are here in Brussels, uh, here are the buildings of the European, of the important European institutions, and it's lousy architecture. Yeah? Uh, nobody uh, can have, uh, or would be able to have feelings seeing a picture of, of them or visiting Brussels and have the same feelings that you have uh, seeing with your own eyes the White House or, or the, Lise, <laughs> the Palace and so on. Um, and um, it is one of the reasons, one of the reasons why the European project is not really touching the majority of the European citizens. But, but the paradox is that people in Albania, which obviously is a, a big focus in this book, they do want to join yeah. the European Union. So are you saying effectively that um, we need a Europe of nation states because it's in those nation states that people respond emotionally to symbols in a way that they don't to yeah. this building that we're yeah. in here. No, uh, we still need those European, we still need a Europe of nations. No, uh, this is not my opinion. Um, the European project is the project uh, to overcome nations. Yeah. It is the, uh, Europe has a narrative. The problem is the narrative uh, has been forgotten. Uh, but it is a fascinating narrative. The founded, uh, founding generation of the European uh, project, which uh, led to, to the today union, was to overcome nationalism because they experienced in their life four nationalistic wars, brutal wars, um, because of, of, of uh, the aggressor nationalism. And the idea was uh, to uh, 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 to text the, the, the different nations, one in each other, uh, and, and to, to combine them in a way that none one can do anything against another without damage itself. And um, this, this um, project is as, as, uh, clearly um, a, a, a clear decision to make the first post-national post -national continent so the, is the, the narrative. The, this is the founding narrative that you're yeah, saying has yeah. been forgotten. But the, 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 the politicians today, the generation which is uh, working today, does not know uh, or for, forgot or uh, found it easier to, to, to collect uh, national votes and so on. But the, the narrative is forgotten and, uh, and therefore the basic contradiction of the European Union cannot be resolved. The contradiction between post-national development and renationalization of the member states. And there is no solution. It mm. can't work. So speaking of collecting national votes, I wonder what view you have of your home country, Austria, which has been in the news a lot in the last few weeks with its uh, veto on uh, other European mm. countries that are trying to join the Schengen zone. Yeah. There's a lot of focus on borders and uh, keeping migration mm. down in Austria. What, what's your view of that? What is called in Austria uh, European policy is um, in uh, reality its policy of inner affairs. Yeah. Um, the, the veto against uh, the um, uh, Bul uh, Bulgarian uh, membership of Schengen, for example, is only um, um, given because 
the, the government expects the, the national voters to want it. And it has nothing to do with the European needs. The renationalization of the European member states um, is, is killing the European idea and it is very interesting that the uh, countries outside and, uh, and uh, the, uh, which want to come in, they know much more um, about European ideals and European values and European um, ideas and they um, expect so much uh, chances for the future uh, based on these ideas. It's very crazy. The better European Union is the union of the countries which are not members of the European Union. So your first book in this trilogy was The Capital, based on uh, Brussels and, and the life yeah. of people in the institutions. The second one is about enlargement. Uh, would you be willing to tell us what the third book in the trilogy is going to be about? Uh, I will, uh, we will have conversation about it when uh, it is published. OK. And what about the prize money? Are you allowed to tell us what you're going to... It's 10,000 euros, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Wh what are you going to spend it on? My, my, my working life. I, okay. I, spend, I spend a lot of money for flats and uh, time uh, living in other countries yeah. for research uh, and collecting material. An award uh, with this importance yeah. could have uh, much more prize money, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being uh, on the programme, Robert Menas. Really a pleasure to host you. And uh, just to show you the book again, Robert Menas, uh, the enlargement uh, not yet translated uh, into English, but it has come out in French. That's all for this edition uh, of Talking Europe. Uh, do join me again very soon. Thank you so much for following.